our program. We have a fabulous guest today. Her name is Joyce Avedisian Readinger. And Joyce has over 30 years of consulting, coaching, and training experience. She helps leaders rally their people around the shared purpose and values in order to achieve exceptional results. In her recently published book, Reflecting God's Character in Your Business, Joyce demonstrates through case studies how positive values based on timeless spiritual truths motivate people to perform at a high level every day. This results in consistently excellent customer service. Whether you are a believer or non-believer, this approach works equally well. Joyce has worked with Fortune 500 mid-sized and small companies in the areas of pharmaceuticals, financial services, transportation, manufacturing, telecommunications, information technology, sales and marketing, including brands that you'll recognize Citibank, JP Morgan, Merck, Nabisco, International Paper Company, and Decor Appliances. Joyce, it's really terrific to have you on the show today. And I think where we would like to start is a little bit about your background from the perspective of how did you get started on a values-based approach that you put forward? We'd like to understand a little bit more about your philosophy in this approach. Well, thank you, Lorraine. When I was, had my first job as an organization development consultant, I observed two sharply different leadership styles. In the Fortune of 500 Telecommunications Company where I was working, I saw how the senior team just lorded it over their, uh, their subordinates and they intimidated them if necessary to get results. And they left a negative wake which was a highly political environment with winners and losers, which obviously undermined teamwork, disengaged employees, and created dissatisfied customers. In sharp contrast, I observed one loan manager, Arnie Eckelman, who was a district manager and later became a, a division president. He believed his job was to serve the people and equip them and develop them so they could perform at their best. I'll never forget, Lorraine, that when there was a disruption of telephone service in Lincoln Tunnel on a raging hot summer night, there was Arnie with his crew all night to fix the problem. Arnie focused on service, excellence, teamwork, mutual respect, and created a positive wake of highly engaged employees who provided consistently excellent customer service. So to answer your question, based on my early experience, I believe that timeless truths such as empathy and service are the key dominoes to extraordinary and sustainable employee, customer, and financial results. That was a great story, Joyce, and some very compelling examples that you provided. If you can break it down even more for our audience, what are the three big ideas that you think link values to performance? I know you've articulated some of them in your story, but it would be great if you could just articulate those for the group. I'd be happy to, thank you. There are three big ideas for creating a high performance culture. The first, is that timeless truths link values to performance. What I mean by this is that values such as respect of the individual, service, excellence, teamwork, innovation, growth, motivate and inspire people to do their best job. Second, the boss is the values. It is not the CEO, it's not the board of directors, it's not even your boss. Values set the standards for who you are and how you operate and do business. And the third big idea is translate values into daily action. That's a key. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, reported that the founders of great companies had strong personal values 
and a remarkable uncanny ability to create mechanisms that bring the values to life and translate them into practice. I'll give you an example, Lorraine. Uh, 3M, you probably know this very well, uses two mechanisms to foster innovation. The first is they allow scientists and encourage them to spend 15% of their time doing whatever interests them. And the second, they require divisions to generate 30% of their revenues from new products, uh, which were introduced in the last four years. You're probably very familiar with that. Yes, certainly I am. That's a, a terrific example too. Well, Joyce, this all sounds very good. A compelling case study, three, three big ideas, great examples. But what about, what about problems? What about the challenges of this value-based approach? What are the challenges and how can one address them? Well, what I've observed, Lorraine, is that uh, leaders are frustrated. <clears throat> Many times their senior team employees are not on the same page, not unified around shared purpose and values, which actually hampers their performance and their ability to consistently create an exceptional customer experience. Very good, yeah, an exceptional customer experience. And, and what is your proven approach? I have a four step approach um, that solves this problem. The first is focus. To discover the greater purpose and three to four core values that drive your company and shape your mission, strategy, and culture. We actually discover these values by analyzing how uh, clients make decisions and how they deal with opportunities and challenges. The second step is alignment, aligning the team around purpose and values. It really starts with the senior team embracing and modeling the values and then giving associates an opportunity to provide input into how they will live out the values in their work and in relating to their associates and customers. The third step is momentum. This requires walking the talk every day by translating the values into behaviors, processes, service standards, and measurements. As a great example of this, at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, they have what they call a daily huddle in which every department meets and talks about one of their 30 service standards and how they will apply it and what's working and what's not working. The fourth step is continuous improvement. To systematically identify and apply lessons learned and best practices across the organization and to create mechanisms that foster innovation. And Joyce, you know, based on this, this proven approach, and I, I really like your final comment about fostering innovation. It's so, it's so critical, the, uh, the need for innovation. And I think especially the, the time that we're living in now, people are looking for new and creative solutions to so, so many problems. And uh, certainly on business front and motivating teams and high performing teams, we face more challenges than ever, ever before. Do you have a case example that you could share? Yes, I do, Lorraine. I applied this systematic process <clears throat> with a Nordic sales and marketing uh, leadership team. It was part of a global pharmaceutical company. And we actually had a transforming effect on the whole culture and the achievement of one major business objective, the launch of a new drug. And we focused initially on just one major business objective to apply the values. And it started with the leadership team and the employees translating the values into behaviors, which they would apply in a launching a new drug. And in so doing, they created an incredible culture of win-win partnerships across countries and functions internally and, and externally with physicians, community health centers, and hospitals. And 
Together, the internal and external stakeholders created and implemented some innovative solutions. And as a result, the drug penetrated the market twice and deep and fast as targeted. And they have created a whole new model for launching drugs. Hmm. That's really impressive, Joyce, that that was all based on this values-based approach that it actually improved market penetration for for a drug. That's a terrific example. And, and what about the benefits that you provide to your clients? I mean, certainly you're speaking of them directly when you shared this case study. I don't think there's any better benefit to a client than seeing bottom line results. And I don't know whether that is an exception or if that's the rule in terms of, of what your clients get out of your approach, but what would you say are the, the top two or three or four benefits? These are very typical results. There are four major ways the clients benefit. The first is on an individual level with individual employees that they feel more fulfilled and there's greater employee retention. The second one is building high performance teams. As you know, Lorraine, there is a lot of silos in organizations, functionally and cross-functionally, and this helps to eliminate those silos. The third is legendary customer service. As you know, when you have um, employees that feel good about themselves and uh, feel good about their company, it comes out in the way they serve customers. And the fourth is long-term growth and resilience. Values are the firm foundation that um, stays with people in the company through the long term. Wow. Well, I don't think that there would be any leader that wouldn't find that very compelling. All of those, those benefits certainly hit the top needs. Joyce, I think this has been a very enlightening discussion with you. You certainly have opened my eyes to the possible benefits of a value-based approach. And for anyone in our audience who might want to get in touch with you and learn more, what's the best way to reach you? Um, the best way to reach me is through my email, and you're welcome to buy my book on Amazon, Reflecting God's Character in Your Business. I look forward to continuing this conversation with anyone who's interested, and thank you very much, Lorraine, for hosting this today. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye.